Scrub is Florida's oldest and most endangered ecosystem. Scrub habitats present extreme environmental conditions for survival, including drought, fire, and nutrient-poor soils. At first glance, Florida's scrub habitat doesn't seem to look like a healthy biodiverse ecosystem, but taking a closer look reveals that there is more than meets the eye. Florida scrub is basically Florida's desert. Uh, this is old sand dunes, old ridges. Uh, the soil is very, very porous. It's basically old dune sand. We call it sugar sand because it's so soft. Scrub is a little different. When we talk about scrub habitat. Uh, people wonder why I'm such an uh, ad advocate for scrub, but scrub is different. You go into a big forest, redwood forest, and look up and you see the, the trees and, and the big sword trees. That's not what you're going to see here. The life is down at the ground. You've got to look down. You've got to get down on your knees and look at all the ants and the, and the insects. Even the scrub jays don't go up high. They stay down low. Uh, all the other plants and animals that are part of the system are all close to the ground. And you'll be totally amazed at the diversity and the amount of life that occurs in a scrub habitat. Scrub habitat, especially sand, sand scrub habitat, is special because if you're walking through it, you wouldn't think anything could survive there. But in fact, there are lots of creatures that are adapted and lots of plants as well. Uh, rosemary scrub is probably one of the best ones of that. So uh, scrub rosemary actually gives out chemicals which it drops on the ground to kill all the other plants around because nutrients are so scarce that it has to kill all the other plants. Otherwise, they would suck what little nutrients there are under the soil. But there are all sorts of other creatures that live there uh, and uh, you don't see them because it's normally very hot during the day so they're mostly nocturnal creatures. Um, one of the nice things about scrub habitat, especially sands, is that you can see their tracks. So you may not see the creatures but you might see uh, you know, the tracks where they have been. And so lots of creatures, snakes and rabbits and other things will actually live there um, but you're not going to see them. Both the, the plants and animals that are, that are here in the preserve have adapted to this hot, dry environment. Even though we still get the same 53 inches of rainfall everybody else does, um, it passes out of the, through the soil very, very quickly. It's not available to the wildlife that's here. Uh, so all the plants have hard, uh, shiny surfaces that hold the water in. They reduce leaf, leaf uh, exposure by curling back. Lots of leaves are, are curled back on themselves. Um, they all have huge root systems. 60% of the biomass in the preserve here is underground. That's a massive, massive root system. When we do a restoration here, we cut the plants down to the ground. Within two weeks, they're already sprouting back up again. And in a couple of years, they're, they're back to be, they grow about a foot a year because they have that big reserve of energy in that root system that's underground. Gover tortoises uh, very seldom ever have water to drink from. They get their moisture from the plants they eat. Uh, plant, animals come out early in the morning to, to uh, eat plants that have dew on them so they get moisture into them and they all have adapted to, to being able to survive without having that water readily available to them. If you look at scrub habitat, it's a relatively small percentage of the land surface in Volusia County or anywhere in Central Florida. But in, this, in Volusia County, it accounts for 56% of the recharge to the aquifer, even though it's only 13% of the land surface. Very important for groundwater, uh, for recharge, uh, very rapid, many, many times the amount of recharge that will occur anyplace else, and that water is being stored directly into the aquifer. What we tell everybody, you know, number one, we've got to buy more scrub. We've got to protect it. Uh, there's very little scrub left. The, the best way of protecting those habitats is actually to be conscious of just how special they are and not to destroy them. The biggest uh, threat to scrub is, is always people, unfortunately. So fire is uh, not a problem because fire will actually uh, help regenerate a lot of it. But people are always uh, destroying it because they just want to build houses. Support legislation that protects and manages scrub habitat from development and habitat fragmentation. If you live in a scrub area, support native scrub species by incorporating native scrub plants into your landscaping design. Respect the scrub's connection to the aquifer by being mindful of fertilizer and pesticide use. Educate your friends about how much life this humble ecosystem supports 
and how important it is for us to protect it.